Tonight, we have a little segment called Zoff Overthinking Things, where Zoff explains... So, are you saying that I overthink things? Oh, uh, uh, kind of. It sounds kind of like a rude accusation. Actually, overthinking means that you're overdoing it, right? But what about just thinking a lot? Is that a bad thing? Or is it a good to live in a world of anti-intellectual stupidity, like everything's a stupid joke? Ooh. Prime example of Zav <laughs> overthinking. We're back again talking about stuff. This is enjoying the sounds of your own voice. Your host, Armon Gonzalez. Loving it. Loving it. Uh, well, I would like to first of all say, Arman, that I really appreciate this beer. It's very good. It's called a Ranger India Pale Ale. It's a little bitter, a little hoppy, but I really needed a beer right now because I feel stressed out because I thought I was doing this, vi this radio show and I was all ready to do it. And it's kind of like... Uh, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, and then the thing is just like, poof. But I'm very happy because um, I really enjoyed uh, all the time I spent um, researching Cassavetti's work. And I'm looking forward to doing a Cassavetti show because of it. Is that a type of pasta? Yes. <laughs> Look forward to uh, Cooking with Xavier Le Play, a radio show of recipes. Uh, I, I would like to thank uh, the fine people at Truly Spoken for giving us beer. What do you think, Ashley? Um, Since you have a mic near you. About what? About the situation? About, about your situation? General, no, no, no. I don't. Um, I about mean, yes, yes and no and everything. Anything Ranger you want to talk about. Don't be afraid to overthink it. Don't be afraid to express yourself. Well, <clears throat> there are some reggae Friday As, flyers sitting on the table uh -huh. right now, and I am intrigued. This is not a club. It's a university club, Timbuktu. Reggae Friday. That's interesting to me. It's a university club, Timbuktu. Uh, That's funny. That's funny. I wonder if they're a nationally accredited uh, college. What was that? I, w I wonder if they're a nationally uh, accredited college. Or maybe in Jamaica. Oh, bummer clout. You got your degree at Club Timbuk too? Oh, you hired. I think I just want someone to break it down for me because like, I like Club Timbuk too and I like dancing, but I just don't understand what this means at all. Oh, Reggae Fridays. That's this is not a club. It's a university. Club Timbuktu. Yeah. Well, what... Gonna yeah, I would say that, you know, part of the problem is that when um, people make flyers, there's a lot of information that you're trying to convey in a very small thing. And so sometimes it's just there's... it's. It's actually an art that not everyone is very good at. That's true. But this flyer is like, it's multifaceted. It's almost kind of, it's great because it has, you, you can do, there's so many different meanings to deduce yeah, from it. Possible. You know, oh. like, like there's another phrase that says, ladies free until Let, 12 a.m. Let's get a webcam uh, picture of this flyer. Uh, can, you kind of hold it up. Wait, you, you're the camera guy. Come no. on. I got bad angles. It's Come just on. dark. Five dollar cover, ladies oh. free until twelve a.m. See, I like I like that uh, because it says like, oh, it's a ladies' night, so ladies either free until twelve a.m. So ladies don't pay the cover until twelve a.m. Or there are free ladies to look at and to dance with, only until twelve a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Then they all go home. They all get kicked out. I don't know. Then they lose their freedom. Then they lose their freedom. Freedom. A big word. Let's, let's hit the hot button. Red. Beep. This is the Hot Zone with DJ Hammer. <laughs> We're back with uh, the sound of your own voice with Armand. I'm, uh, 
I'm with overthinking it. Uh, our late night discussion with Xavier Laplay. I want to ask him, what do you think about the word freedom? 60 seconds, go. I have no thoughts. <laughs> You're killing me. 60 seconds, rewind, reversed. Definition in your mind. Um, <laughs> see, my problem is I overthink everything. Yeah. Immediately, I think of dictionaries and um, mountains of information that just, it would take me a lifetime to answer your question. Plax still says 20 seconds, go. Um, freedom is not free. We're going to remix this question. Add a little curry, spice, blam, freedom. Dalai Lama, should he be able to visit China in a, with a tourist visa? Mm, I'm going to put I'm going to see what Ashley has to say about that. I'm sorry. Should he be able to visit China with a tourist visa? Is that the, was your, was that was your question? Dalai Lama seen the sights. Wants to uh, hit up the Great Wall. Yay nay. What do you think the Chinese would do? Don't be afraid to overthink it. What would the Chinese do if the Dalai Lama wanted to walk along the Great Wall of China? Is that your question? That's a totally different question. Try and figure it out, guys. You're losing your consistency. Going. What would the Chinese do? See, is this a yes, no? I mean, is there a right I mean, answer? Am I losing my consistency? Uh, <laughs> You're third wheel? No. I'm blending a drink. Do you have all the answers? Is this like a quiz thing where you're gonna like tell us? No, I'm just what trying. Freedom to, is. See, I couldn't. I could never answer. That I'm question. asking you. These are questions. If you, do you There's want no, us to answer the questions, man? Yeah, I don't Shut want up. you guys. Don't. <laughs> don't. Throw. Or do you just love to hear the sound of your own voice? Pew. Arman. Are they trying to get back at me? Yeah, I like the sound of my own voice. Yeah, and they I like asking questions to questions. Nowhere, nobody's gonna get nowhere with that kind of attitude. That's fine. That's fine. If you want to play hardball, we can play hardball. If you want to play softball? I'll underhand pitch you a question. A question. Don't reply with a question. All right. If you do, <laughs> is this for me or Ashley? I'm gonna rotate the guest. Or Sir Mix a lot. I forgot. All right. So, uh, okay. Zav. <laughs> I seem to get a lot of the questions in this <laughs> Sir Mix a lot. Well, this is a hot zone with Zav overthinking things. Uh, Are you nullifying my intelligence? Actually, we're going to get back to you with the weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty Lame. Hu it Lame. All right. Skipping Zav. He's drinking cerveza. I think I'm one of those free ladies until 12 a.m. Well, guess what? I'm not. We're back with Overthinking Things with Ashley Coffee. Ashley, what's the weather like today in Milwaukee? 53212. Area code. Look it up. River West filming video. Radio. Is blistering heat today. Very humid. Probably 80% humidity. Felt like a natural sauna. Ooh, I'm getting used to this. In a week, I'm going to go to Vietnam and check out uh, the sites around there. I was just trying to, just trying to put it out there. This is the, enjoying the sound of your own voice, Armand Gonzalez. Uh, and we're talking about going to Vietnam. I'm going to Vietnam in a week. And I'm going to take a lot of photos. Can you believe people don't know how to use a manual camera anymore? It's ridiculous. Aperture, film speed, everything's a click of a touch screen. And uh, it's, it's I don't know. It's very confusing. 
Dove, I said, you know how to use a manual camera. Why would you use a manual camera, Armand? Uh, control. To something else. Full control of what you want to see or what you want to capture. Explain, Why it, have, explain it further. No, I honestly am confused because you seem like someone who's kind of a, you know, new, improved, latest, you know, whatever is the newest, latest thing, go for that. And um, is that the newest, latest thing is to go uh, retro I'm, with, uh, with uh, uh, the, uh, I'm oh, sorry, uh, I overthought something. <laughs> overthinking it again. Up, Pre right. Pretty confused. Uh, uh, I'm a very traditional guy myself, you know. I like, uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If it's working, keep with it. You know, I switched over to DVDs because my VCR stopped rewinding. And uh, it's kind of backfired on me, you know. CDs, eh, who, who really has a CD that doesn't skip? You know, like, uh, it's either digital media, vinyl, maybe occasional tape. You got to just bust out the two-point uh, pencil and rewind the tape to get it uh, and tie it up. Uh, I like that hard format. It's crazy. If there's an EMPM uh, pulse, you know, to wipe out all the computer information, the only stuff that would be a record is uh, shit like that. It's what weird. is hard format? Is that like a real term, or did you make it up? Uh, let's uh, switch over to that for the hard format. Hard-hitting questions with video store owner Xavier LaPlay. Digital media mogul in River West, Wisconsin. Wah, 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 wah. Was that a question? <laughs> <laughs> Does hard format exist? Uh, what is that? Well, I'm assuming that... He what, meant analog or something? I'm going to try to take a leap of faith here and say that I think, I'm, I think that what Armand is trying to say is that uh, analog versus digital, uh, that analog is uh, a hard copy, and maybe he means that having a hard copy is more, um, is something that will uh, weather time better. That's my... I think that he just thought about the substance of a cassette tape and, a, and like a videotape, and like thought maybe it was <laughs> hard. Although I think a CD is hard, it's it's more it's more breakable. You but it's, what you're doing right now. What were you just I just hit, yeah. not I knocked on my head with my fist. Yeah. <laughs> we're back with hard the head. sound of my own voice, enjoying yeah. it, Armand Gonzalez. These uh, guys are uh, kind of not giving me the benefit of the doubt. They think uh, I'm uh, some kind of uh, idiot. I'm not an idiot. Well, they they were they were kind we of the thrown off. They were kind of thrown off because format. I was talking I think about that manual this format photography. Is witty <laughs> One upsmanship and um, uh, veiled criticisms in the guise of humor. So we're just going along with that format. You started it. I know. I'm I'm completely. I'm idiot. a I'm a I'm a lightweight in this arena because I'm a. More of the kind of like delving into things, kind of picking them apart. You know, it's like untangling a ball of yarn. And I understand that. My, That's why I, uh, when I titled your segment Overthinking It. Because when you course. start talking about yourself, you're over overthinking it. Touche. See? Uh, <laughs> point, point well made. I'm down on the mat again. Down for the count. Tell him that his segment is called Rambling On. Down for the clown. The nice thing about thinking about things is you don't have to ramble on so much. Rambling. Well, You're it's the, the difference We got between, Rambler over it's here. It's like the difference we between got, skipping, got, skipping got, along the sur surface of things uh, and then... Uh, we don't have enough mics. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Michael. Michael Thompson. We got Michael Thompson. Chiming in. Dr. Chime. So, and, uh... <laughs> chiming in. Uh, what's your feel... Uh, uh, can I ask you a question first off? I, I don't want to seem rude. I, there's usually waivers we have to sign to get somebody to chime in, but I I feel like you want to be on the show with all the uh, the backseat uh, bullshit. 
No, I just want to be the third person. Uh, I'm. If you don't, if you don't acknowledge Ashley as a woman, and I could see that's how you would be the third person. But there's already three people: me, <laughs> Zav, and Ashley. No, he means third person narrative. Call me um, old fashioned, but the, I'm sorry. What's your name in the back? I don't know if I know. I'm, we introduced ourselves, but I forgot your name. Uh, what's your name? I'm Seth. We got Seth? Stephanie oh, Legand Seth. over Seth. here. Uh, Seth. The audience, I've once uh, overthink it and uh, include the audience. Uh, audience, how well, do you feel about uh, Zav's uh, replies to the question? Zav, don't overthink it. Just hold, hold, hold the mic. I would love if somebody could bring the fan this way. I could, I could do that. I'm, well, he's overthinking it. I'm underthinking it. I'm just going to bring the fan over here. It's gonna be the end. That's not underthinking <laughs> it. No, that's just doing. That's, that's thinking wisely. No, you're for everyone's physical needs. You're doing it. That's common and sense over, with Stephanie I'm, Legant. I'm uh, over. <laughs> I'm quotations in the air. Overthinking we're, uh, according to Armand. Uh, we're gonna take a little break for commercials. Beep. Yeah, because we live in a capitalist society that nobody can think about something without having to have a fake commercial in it because we've been indoctrinated by commercials all our lives and so when we do a parody of radio even though we're doing real radio oh. we always have to make a fake commercial because our lives are surrounded we're back with again. real commercials no, 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 no. Keep oh well that was basically my point but did the fan we got a Dr. Chimes covering up my microphone oh, it's, oh it's, chiming in uh, wants uh, to be a part of the radio show you ever have you ever met Mitch before? Mitch? Mitch? Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were we? Oh, you got caught up in overthinking uh, advertising. Oh, nice. Thank you. Oh, no, I was in overthinking hey, advertising. Uh, Zab, I was just what? pointing out that a lot of times How, people you, who have been... Are you an uncle? Been, uh, are you an uncle? Indoctrinate. Uh, yes, I'm an uncle. You're an uncle. Yeah. Is that okay? Does that have something to do with Are you uh, business commercials? On? I'm just saying you don't have children, but you're an uncle, though. Right. Uh, are you a business owner? Would it be, uh, yes. I guess uh, part <laughs> of being of, uh, are you a, a capitalist or being in a capitalist society is being a human that has responsibilities. Oh, so people who live in non-capitalist societies are humans who don't have responsibilities? What do you mean non-capitalist? Are you talking about Ghana? Or like talking a third world country world. that... How about everything that... Uh, we originally hand How about everything we originally did? How about the, the Native Americans who lived in America at one time? Did they need advertisements to talk? Oh, you don't think uh, a person in a bigger TP was like, Son, look at my big ass TP against your rinky ding TP, or uh, how much buffalo tongue I got on lock, or uh, oh, why are you wearing face paint right now? Is that kind of like not a really camouflage? No, you're uh, putting on your peacock fathers right there, showboating. All I was saying is that um, I'm just I'm just saying, just because adver advertising is. A yes, no, go ahead, capitalistic. Go to, actually, go to a, commercial. But it go to jobs. go to fake commercial now. Let's let's hear the fake commercial. How did you turn this on? Oh, it's on that. River was filming video supporting on the local street, on the wire and independent filmmakers on the wire is, uh, like just oh, a, throughout yeah. the Milwaukee area. Supplies, videos, DVDs. <laughs> okay, end. here's here's something. When I was uh, ooh, 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 commercial ah, takeover. Never mind. Never mind. This is a radio show. I'm what sorry. Was what was it, Zav? Zav, we're back on Armand. We need Dr. Chimes. <laughs> right. Under, uh, yeah, we're back on Armand uh, Control Freak Hour, <laughs> uh, where Armand controls everything and tells people how to live. Keeping it interesting. Armand, can you, tell, um, can you tell Mitch I'm what he's doing control. wrong with his life? Please tell me. I'd love to hear this. Am I too much of a busybody? You're not, visit You're not visiting the doctor enough. Uh, 
not being prescribed something to make you alleviate the anxiety, or 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 not being productive and not enough in a sensible way to distract you from your anxiety. Okay, now Steph. What's the question? No, Armand, tell Steph what she's doing wrong. <laughs> We're back with Armand, the sound of my voice, and uh, we got an audience uh, rebuttal to our guest, somewhat to Jerry Springer. Uh, do you have something to say to Zav? I have nothing. Uh, it sounds like... Tell me Silence. what I do wrong with my life. Yeah. Ooh. Did I... What? You want to hear what you're doing wrong with your life? Yeah. Well, uh, tell me the... I, I really don't know what you're doing in your life, so I can tell you what you're doing. But give me three things in life you regret doing in the last week. It can keep them. That I regret. Uh... I guess no, I don't really actually, regret anything. She doesn't regret. She, she lives her life with true strength. Oh, now Mitch is, is now Mitch knows. Which is beyond regret <laughs> and beyond resentment. Matt, Mitch, why don't you uh, wait till you have a microphone in front of your face? I don't want to sound. Chiming in. Sports commentary. You know? <laughs> Ashley, is, Mitch, like, like, is Mitch right? <laughs> is Mitch right or is Armand right? Dun, 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 Mitch is right. Dun, dun, Armand dun. is so wrong. <laughs> I would only Armand be is wrong. So, Armand is so, so wrong. He's wrong. Armand is so freaking wrong all the time <laughs> that he's right sometimes. Wow. That's my... It's that's so bad. It's that's good. my over analysis of the. That's our. That's our. That's the, the meaning of our man. That's his catchphrase. It's so bad. It's good. Hey. <laughs> oh, he just slipped into the defensive. He just slipped into the defensive. Armand just slipped into the defensive. Go. What does the defensive look like when you slip it's in, in his it? Face and changing his face. Ah. Face I'll tell you a secret. <laughs> The more you talk, the worse you look. Hmm. If you're a little you bit slicker, I'm looking at you snap, right now. snap your responses. <laughs> you know, some you're, people feel that way, but the only people that feel that way are people who feel inferior and people who don't have a sense of self or grounding. Well, I already know you think you're smarter than me because you were... I don't were, think that at all. Oh, Wait, well, well, then why were Ashley? you surprised? But you were looking at me when you said it. <laughs> Which who who are you saying? Why thinks why were you, than you? Su- both of you? Why were you surprised that I knew about manual features or appreciate the manual aspect of cameras? I wasn't one bit we surprised. Oh, you surprised. no no no, no, no. Uh, you act quote well, for quote. Does that if make you, you an intelligent th- person to know the ma- to know? Uh, does that make you an intelligent person to understand how to work a manual camera? No. What does that make me then? It says it just doesn't make you anything. It says that you like to use manual cameras. Oh, whoa, cameras. wait, 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 wait. Knowledge doesn't make you anything of anything. Ashley Coffee quote. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge is different than intelligence Steph. is what I'm saying. Wait, you... Wait, I have knowledge. Wait, wait, what did he say just now? Repeat that. Can, can you repeat that? Knowledge is not the same thing as intelligence. They're different things. How are they different? Because you took a standardized test and said you were intelligent? Wait. What's the definition of intelligence? No, a standardized test would actually correlate more so with knowledge and not intelligence. Knowledge is obtaining, understanding how to obtain information oh. and encoding it, but intelligence is applying it. How do you? Uh, oh, really? How oh, do yeah, you, of course. I think you're right. How do you determine um, intelligence? Because I was going to say, then what is wisdom? Ooh. It's time. How do you? In- time, experience. Yeah. How do you determine oh, okay. intelligence, though? But what about someone who's wiser I, than their years? Wait, 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 oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold on. This is Armand overthinking. Oh things. yeah, sorry. No, this is Armand control freak hour. I forgot. 
Okay, sorry. Oh, that this, overrides this not overthinking not, uh, things. Yeah. <laughs> that generally is true. No, that but was you know the sad show of uh, the sound, enjoying the sound of my voice. Deep. But I want before Ashley tries to call me an idiot or I'm unintelligent. How do you uh, define or? Wait, why are you getting so defensive? Do you feel like you're an idiot? Oh, well, you guys started attacking me. That's the only reason I have uh, come on the defensive. You? No, I'm well, I would say we are, my I, radio I'm attacking show. Armand. I'm sparring with Armand in the ring of uh, witty repartee. That's been the that's been the show from the start. It's witty band. And I feel like Armand's had as many good hits. Uh, uh, Armand's had as many body blows as I as I have. It's true that Ashley is you know helping. Uh, it, it's true that you're kind of one against three or four. It's hard to tell with Steph because she's playing her I'll cards tell close you a secret. to her chest. I'll tell you a secret right off the bat. You can't heckle the hecker. Lair. If you want to have fun, <laughs> let's have fun on this show. Let's talk. Let's spice it up. Let's uh, go around the circle, like tell the most the embarrassing show. story, and uh, <laughs> a little bit oh. of uh, Okay, well, here's, here's my most embarrassing story. I was told by this friend of mine, our, uh, Frankie Latino, hour. that uh, he was going to do a, a, that. Well, first, it's my fault. I suggested maybe you should do a radio show with this famous person you brought into town. And then, like a like a dummy, I thought Frank. Well, no, like a dummy, I thought it actually would happen. But then Frankie kept postponing and postponing, which is totally ex expected with someone who's famous. And so I have no um, issue with that because I know that people who, are, especially someone who's coming from out of town, doesn't know me and doesn't have any reason to come here. Why would they want to come here? But Frankie was being nice as a friend, and he made the one mistake of not intuitively um, figuring out and telling me, like, it's just not going to work. And instead, he brought everyone over, and then I made an ass of myself. So that's the most embarrassing story I have, at least today. How do you make an okay. ass of because I went through all yeah, the trouble of the setting up this thing, and then everybody all of a sudden was like, Ooh, this isn't working. Uh, you gotta like not do this, and and uh, people like Armand were coming along and being clowns, and and actually it would have been perfectly fine if Frankie didn't bring his circus of friends, and if he would have just gone through with the thing that he gave me the impression he was gonna do. But instead, he brought his whole circus of friends over. Wait, wait. I feel like we should perform. We should what pretend. What, but well, the, no. Yeah, no, it was no. well, it was chaotic, and it was just not possible at no. all. It I mean, never would have happened. Yeah. Like, did you there was probably about ten together? people. Oh. And let's uh, let's re let's enact the interview as though it took place. I think Ashley could do social gray. <laughs> Ashley, can you feel like you can do social gray? <laughs> well, yeah, I think I can do that. Okay, she let's, didn't talk let's, like do, that let's, at all. let's do an she interview. She really didn't talk, and I don't blame her at all. I feel yeah. sorry for did her. She feel, did, you, did she seem uncomfortable? Wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait. Yeah, she wait, seemed wait. uncomfortable, and I felt uncomfortable, and it was just dumb. Yeah. But it didn't have to happen because Frankie didn't have to. Oh, but pretend he like, that it was off. He likes showing you off, though. You know that. No, he wasn't showing me off. He was making uh, me look like a dumbass. A little he bit. Was showing her yeah. Off. Both. Yeah, and both. he was both. 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 He was showing her oh, off. Come on, come on. I'm gonna and be I'm gonna be nice to Frankie and say that he probably hey, that he was doing everything right except one tiny little mistake. I want to keep this show. And the only uh, tiny little mistake. No, you started it. You asked what's the most embarrassing moment, and that was my embarrassing right, let's, moment. Let's do this interview. Let's yeah. pretend like let's let's go. The only thing Sasha Frankie Gray, did wrong. Sasha. Hello. Was that he? Uh, wait, I should have known me, better. My Frankie impersonation. Hey, hey guys. I'm here with Zav and uh, Sasha Gray. Um, no. We're talking about Casavetti's. He Is didn't do any Frankie? of that. He no? he just trooped in with all his friends, and me. then they and then he said, "You got to do this right this second. Well, and I was like, camera. "I can't do this in one second. It's a conversation, and like I'm not gonna. I'm not Armand. I can't just do like stand up comedy with this person. And I have. If that was what it was supposed to be from the start, then I would have never done it anyway. Like. The only thing I'm good at is, is talking and having a conversation. I think he was. I think that he was overstretching what was possible, yeah. and I think he was trying to be nice to me. But I think sometimes when you're trying to be nice to someone, the best thing is to just say no. It's not going to work. 
you know that's the most honest to be honest that's the nicest thing you can do with a friend i have a very old saying in my country never never you ever ever, ever look a gift elephant in the mouth because you know, you know what you're gonna see a rotten teeth a rotten teeth full mouth yeah but rotten this is, teeth this is you have over you get and rotten a, teeth can be beautiful a beautiful elephant um, rotten teeth have all kinds of interesting foot qualities tusks. i have rotten teeth and uh and rotten you can't even teeth tell. From the outside. Or mom, that was pretty fucking fantastic, actually. Did you, what was the thing again? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Chima. You uh, think uh, I'm uh, some idiot or something in uh, New Oh, think very good. That was no, actually. I think that you saying, think that we think that you're an idiot. Well, when you when say the truth is that we don't think that you're an idiot, we think you're no, 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 something no. else, but not I wouldn't an idiot. think that if you didn't say contradictory words like, "Oh my God, Darman, that was actually very funny," you would say that's funny, not saying actually with a hesitant voice. So, I uh, mother uh, be uh, beep. You can uh, oh, go suck it because... Oh, newsflash, just in. Life is complicated. People are complicated. <laughs> Public service message. Brought to you by River West Video. Are we going to enact this? Are we going to do this interview? We got a who ha section. Can you do it? You want to write DVDs? It? No, that would just further embarrass me to no, re-embarrass myself. Oh, why? Why? I think it's like... It was therapy. embarrassing. It's therapy. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's pretend... It's embarrassing. Let's let's embarrassing. Let's embarrassing. Let's embarrassing. Kind of, not really. He was just being, it's showing off to Sasha Gray, trying to get her attention. And then Nicole came and she was being all weird. And then there's this other woman with a, an old school camera taking pictures. And then for oh, some right, retarded reason, this other person came and was like doing like the cut, cut sign, which I felt like he was just like freaking out. Like no, like you got to like, uh, it's not working. It's, you know, it's cut. And then, um, but it would have been hey, fine. Hey, buddy. I think why it would have been you fine. you work the camera? Doctor time? We got a, a timing in. But he I doesn't want wrong. to be on camera. He's on the camera now. You got to work the camera if you don't want to be on the camera. Look at the laptop screen. We got to focus on something. This is not only a radio station, but there is visuals. Visuals. I'm not trying to overthink it, but I am. No, I, I'm the overthinker. You're the control freak, remember? <laughs> oh, control freak, control freak, or ambition. Ambition. Oh, the two are not mutually exclusive. Ooh. But um, people say Mark Cuban, control freak, but he, NBA, tournament, playoff champion, GM, won it. You know why? Control freak, ambition, same thing. Think about it. Oh, don't overthink. You might want to, you try overthinking about it. You have a video story, you think about things. If I overthink and you're a control camera, camera guy, controller, what is Ashley? If you want to chime in, uh, hold the camera. Ashley Coffee, you want to need a microphone? Ashley, what are you, what is your, or what, what is your flaw? I'm not a very tactful person when it comes to like interacting with others and saying yeah. and and saying things to them. Mm, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, the I offend people. The only person who can tell you is Armand. We need to well, go to the I oracle. I accidentally made Armand think that I think that he's an idiot, but I don't. Armand, think can that you he's tell us what Ashley's flaw is? Tell me. Ten seconds. Ashley's flaw is not being able to pinpoint her own flaw. <laughs> so she's kind of like... I did just pinpoint my own flaw, though. Oh, nah. thinking it. Dang. <laughs> Mitch, what's Mitch's flaw, Armand? Mitch's flaw is he wants to be the host, but he can't be the, the Donahue he wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> the Donahue? Uh, you're not. You must be too young to get the reference. Ding, ding, ding. What is um, <laughs> what is Steph's flaw? <laughs> she won't let me get her pregnant. Ooh, uh, weird. That's that's not true. 
Shaking the dice. Uh, three three weeks out. You want him, Do you want him to get you pregnant? Let's go back to when we were talking about embarrassing moments. This is an embarrassing moment right now. No, no. I'll tell you my <laughs> most embarrassing moment. I okay. puked in front of Union Station in front of some very cute Asian foreign exchange students. That was my very embarrassing moment. <laughs> That's a pretty oh. good one. Except, were you drunk? I was very drunk. That That's doesn't. Why it happened. I'll I'll tell you a secret. Those Asian foreign exchange students, they're gonna be puking a lot in their lifetime. <laughs> Whenever they drink the fire sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, what's your embarrassing moment? Oh. Too many? Give it a little time. Oh, oh, oh. No, it's, it's like, no, this is like when you're at the restaurant. You need time to look at the menu. That's okay. Let's go back to Steph, because she was actually opening up to us about some of these things. So you don't think it's embarrassing for Armand to talk about this very important <laughs> issue? No, he's just joking. He's not being serious. But many jokes are said in jest, or many je what is it? Truths are said in jest? Ooh, that's, is that a David Robbins quote? Yes. Well, I think that this is, is no. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I think that this jest is said in jest. Oh, okay. Ooh. Is this a jest in said in jest, or is this a truth said in jest, Armand? We're back to the sound uh, of my own voice. It's Armand Gonzalez, and we're talking with my lady friend. Hey, would Doctor chime in? Why are you holding the mic? Are you? Uh, what, what you, would you pull it away from me? Are you trying to pull it away from me? Wow. I'm a control freak. Ooh. Oh, there's con two in the same oh, room. We're, we're, this, uh, this is like, we're, we're uh, this never has happened freak before. With Mitch. Power play. <laughs> Power play. Yeah. I gave the opportunity to work the camera, and you wanted to uh, skedaddle from that. You haven't really proven yourself. <laughs> you can turn off the flash or dim it a little bit. Yeah, there's lots of light now. What with the fan blowing the light around. That, that's very dimmable to that light. It's a hot summer night tonight, too. No, th that is sweltering. Dimmer. Sweltering. I don't want to make it look like a fool, but you do go to UWM for film. Ooh. Wait, are you, why video? are you looking at me when you say that? <laughs> There's at least two of us. I'm just seeing these college people... I'm, you sure went to so Club to Bug too if you wanted a degree. I'm not in school. Mitch, you're not in school? No, what the fuck school. are you doing with your life then? This is where you pass the mic to me. <laughs> yeah, you right. asked a lot of um, rhetorical questions. What was, what was the question? What are you doing with your life? Mitch, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Uh, Living it. Mitch, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Real answer. Real answer. Living it. Where do, you, where do you sell, see yourself in the next six months? Are you my mother, Armand? Uh, Mitch, you know the answer to that question. Obviously not. Where Pretend you gonna, for a moment where do you that see Armand is your mother, Mitch. Oh, and then I'm answering that question? I'm in the process of applying for school right now. <laughs> is it Armand. I'm not your mom. Don't bullshit me. Give me the truth. All right. I'm in the process of applying for school. All right. Good. 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 Oh, wait, 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 wait. Armand, what the fuck are you doing with your life right now? How is the illustration going? Pretty well. Pretty well. Cool. Ashley is yawning. We need to bring her back into the conversation. Yeah. But back um, to life, Ashley, back could you tell us? Um, could you tell us how to? You should give us a weather report from the perspective of what we should all wear for the heat wave that's coming. All right, all right. Let me tell you all what you should be wearing for this heat wave that's about to come. Yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of these days. I'm, you know. <sighs> You, this is actually sad. I'm usually a, a very observant person, and I like to uh, absorb the fashions around me. But I've been spending a lot of time alone and indoors and around a very Ooh. select group of people. And is so it the I Ariana haven't. Runs? No. 
I wish. I mean, but I mean, these days the well, inter- the internet is. I, I don't know if the last a little bit. I look on the internet. Oh, but that's right. I forgot we were on control freak hour. It's interesting because for something being so. Well, I'm, well, on, I'm talking. Hold up. Okay, for it's interesting because the internet being a place that is so um, like vast and fast. <laughs> internet being a place that's like easy well, access, right. like. Uh, it's live. The internet is live, essentially. And it's interesting, though, because are, I are do... Are you really describing I, the internet to people listening to this on the internet? <laughs> I have a point. Stop. My point being, it's interesting to me that, 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 that those are the qualities of the internet. But from, like, the blogs that I've been looking at or, like, the fashion I've been trying to look at online, there's no, like, summer... I haven't been seeing much summery stuff, except for like the same old like American Apparel thing, you know, like uh-huh. high waisted shorts. Just tell us what we should be wearing. Okay, you should be wearing a crop top. Everyone's got a crop top these these days. What is a crop top? Over, a, or a, underneath a mesh tank. That has nothing to do with the crop top. I will. I'll go back. I'll go back Actually, to that. Uh, a crop top know? is a T-shirt or. T- <laughs> it's very rude to take a mic and boss hog it. Uh, it's like, what are you doing? Come on. Um, Steph, can we uh, turn to you? You've had the least um, uh, she's chance a guest. to talk tonight. She's not even on um, the show. Oh, oh she's your um, hey. object of decision. Is she on the stage floor? Are we I'm sorry, is I, I forget. In control I, of her own know. destiny. Maybe this is why Sasha Gray didn't want to be on your show because your uh, your radio show really has no like oh, I actual like radio show like Armand, you, premise. Once you step Armand, on the I booth, know Sasha Gray you're not was on my show. Or because when you're in the video store renting the a movie. There's a lot of reasons why Sasha Gray wasn't on this show. Hey, hey. This is overthinking if you it. If, if you don't want me to uh, say what I want to say, you know, I'm just... Armand, how do you feel about the way you aggressively snatched that microphone away from me? Uh, that you shouldn't aggressively held it away from me. And, I wasn't uh, aggressive. You... I ra- oh, what? When I reached for it, you pulled away and said, no, I'm going to talk about the internet. But, like People don't know what the internet is. Come on, girl. I'm not trying to make you look stupid, but you're making yourself look stupid when you're like, the internet's vast, it's free, everybody, but I'm not really seeing summer fashions, come on. Come on. Anyways, what I'm going to recommend this summer for my uh, male companions is uh, a short sleeve, ideally thin cotton dress shirt, one size bigger than you normally wear. Take it down a button or two, you'll be feeling fine. Uh, if you haven't picked up a pair of flip flops, do it. It gives the opportunity to clip your toenails. God knows you haven't done it all winter. And, uh, you know, this box is your rambling briefs. Rambling on with uh, our mom. So should we talk about Casavetti since you did all this preparation? No, I uh, feel great. Actually, that's the best thing that happened was... You could um, keep it to yourself? No, no, no I'm going to do a Casavetti It's, it's, a, it's oh, really gonna, hard yeah, to go over a recipe when you're not in the kitchen. What's that? Question. It's hard to go over a recipe when you're not in the kitchen? Yeah, the Casavetti, you said it was a pasta. Oh, right, right, right. Um, oh. Wait, Ashley, you had a question? Since... Since uh, the radio show has, since the radio station has been born, um, do you have to clean the windows much more? <laughs> um, I am kind of slack on that uh, oh, okay. front. As that doesn't matter. You could probably tell from most of this store, I'm kind of a low maintenance type of person. I'm high. Ma- I maintain certain things, but those are the kinds of things that I. Don't really care. Put low on the totem pole. But I'll probably, you know, if a guy comes along, I wish they were easy to clean. Then if a guy came along and asked to clean them, I would just, you know, give him some, throw him some money and then he'd do it. Yeah. We're back I'll with shit talking Armand. Oh, cool. Thank you. This is your host, Armand okay. Gonzalez, getting his scooper pooped. And uh, we're going to leave it off as Xavier LaPlay and Ashley Coffey uh, giving their little. Uh, Zingers about Armand's uh, repertoire of hosting the show for the last hour in Overthinking It with 
Xavier LaPlay and Ashley Coffee. Right. And this is your host, Armand Gonzalez, signing off. So uh, follow me on Twitter, backslash Armand. Pound sign. Do <laughs> you even know what that means? It's called a hashtag. You said backslash. Yeah, I said black slash. That's how you follow my URL. Is that kind of like hard? What was it again? Hard? Uh, <laughs> hard medium or something? Uh, I don't want to sing you anymore, hard, hard guys. Media. Hard format. Hard format. Hard format. Yeah. I'm going to leave you off with uh, and, well, Dr. Chimes, uh, Mitch, the guy from the sideline. They wanted it. That's really I'd like wanted to get on one last the word. show. Um, Armand, could, uh, before Armand Control Freak Hour ends, I'd like to have one last word from from uh, Steph, if she wants to say it. Sure, 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 sure. What final it? word? Final words, or are you going to ask her a question? Was well, control freak Armand. I Why did you would enter the microphone. Well, I would, yeah. I would, Normally, yeah. I don't let the audience uh, get assaulted with questions by. Uh, uh, where does the audience guess? begin? Okay, well, Overthinker Zav would ask the question, where does the audience begin? Technically, I'm off ask? the show because I'm off the yellow stage. But uh, since we Zav is uh, kind of a, hey, I got a video store, radio show kind of thing, and it's a, the internet, so it's a Harambe of sorts or whatever new age co-op term he wants to throw out there. Uh I'm going to pass it over to Steph. Steph? Touche. Steph really wants to know where the bathroom is because I really have to go to the bathroom. Steph is a doer. <laughs> She's a mover and shaker. It's towards the Ciao. back and around the corner. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, we lost our... Now, <laughs> wow, nice. I like it. Oh, do it again. Do it again. Come here. Poor staff has to use the bathroom. <laughs> well, we lost our main point of tension, which was holding together the drama. Do you think so? Without Armand, I don't know where this goes. I think we should... Uh Perform an interview that was meant that was intended to be done today. No, he's using it for something else. No, we don't talk about Cassavetes. We can still pretend like we're Sasha Gray and Zav Le Play. I'm not that intrigued by that anymore. By I which one? Ooh. I just that I don't care. Which part? Care. The Sasha Gray. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh, yeah. have to yeah. it. Right. I see what you're saying. Sorry. Bad suggestion. <laughs> I'm just all about fabulation, and I thought it would be a witty kind of like alternative to this kind of lamenting that our celebrity didn't show up this evening, and just do it as though it's she was here. Though. We all are. We all wanted to see it go on there. What's that? I actually didn't think the that enemy. much about it. I just thought like, well, it's really hot, and I'm really uncomfortable in my bed right now, and I was awake, and I thought. I thought that I would actually like to see Zoff more than Sasha Gray. Do you have a fan in your room? No. Fan makes all the difference. And actually, I like seeing you more than Sasha Gray, too. <laughs> Even though it's exciting to see a famous person, but and it was pointless. And we're taking pointless. a sentimental kind of like, turn. I'll just, <laughs> I have to get it off my chest. I mean, this is a total stranger. I don't know this person. I never heard of this person before, Frankie. So it's not like if it was someone who I really had like lots of thoughts about. That you admired. Yeah, or admired or had yeah. any. Yeah. So it was kind of like pointless anyway, but um, I did, I'll be, I'll be honest, I was sort of whoring the video station in a, or radio station in a way where it was like, well, this would probably be look good on the radio station to have this famous yeah. name on it. And I actually, actually, I won't even be dishonest about it. I think that that is what you need on a radio station like on a thing like this is to have a lot of things like that happen. So um, mm -hmm. also, I think she's a controversial 
person figure and i thought it would have been cool oh, to yeah. not talk about her stuff and talk about Cassidy's. because that was her request she was like well I, i'll do it but i don't want to talk about my stuff like my adult movies or whatever and i was like that's good because i would prefer not to in certain yeah. ways i want to just talk about like i basically just really want to do a show and whatever so anyway the point is this person's famous but they're famous for lots of very debatable reasons in certain ways. The scandal. Uh, scandalous and all that. And I think yeah. it's admirable. I actually admire anyone who goes that, um, takes that big of a risk in their life. Like, it's so dangerous and scary and all of that. You know, it's a super scary world, you know, that she is somehow like Immersed. came out on the top of, you know? And um, so. I admire that. I don't have top. any negative feelings about that person to the degree that I know them. But I am happy to just, I mean, in some ways it does, does show me like, well, okay, fine. You know, I, um, you know, this is the nature of things. When you have media, you have, occasionally you'll have people who have a lot of uh, notoriety. And when you have someone who has a lot of notoriety, it reminded me a lot of this other interview I did with this other person, Medea Benjamin, who is on the whole other end of the spectrum. She's like a super hardcore activist. And oh, right. Uh, Pink something? She's with Code Pink, and Code she's Pink, done all yeah. kinds of crazy. Right. Also super scary, but not uh -huh. in... What is Code Pink? Code Pink is a... Uh, activist group. An activist group, a feminist activist group. Hacktivists, that, though, right? Hack maybe they call themselves hacktivists. No, because they're not hackers. No, they're not? No. They're people who like will show up in some politically uh, charged moment <laughs> and suddenly stand up and disrupt oh. um, the event and oh, just right. tell it like it is. Interventions. And then get arrested. Yeah, they do lots of interventions and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, she came and it was a similar type of feeling where it's like, I don't know you, I don't, and I'm not really good in that way. I'm not good at like talking to someone who I've never met. Like, I'm not good at that, like on an airplane or something. Um, I need time to like connect with someone. So it was doomed from the start. So whatever. With Sasha or with Medea? Well, with Medea, it was similar in the sense that she came in here and it was like you could tell she's used to going on cnn and yeah. stuff and she's sitting in this weird little window space which she appreciated but at the same time i think she was like what you know like you, you you're not professional you're just a person and i was expecting i'm so used to like you know this high level of professionalism but i think there's something really great about not having that if you can have the time. Like, for example, um, uh, and I'll try to not talk about this too long because it's sort of whatever. Um, no, go but on. Like, Karen did a sh this woman, Karen, did an hour and 20 minute show with Roseanne Barr. On oh, the, really? Yeah, here. And I mean, Roseanne Barr was on the phone. Yeah. She wasn't on, in sitting here. But. Um, that was an example where it's like she probably never gets an hour and 20 minute interview you know that's a pretty rare thing so like we have a great thing here going i don't feel ashamed of it but it has to be the right moment you know yeah. and i've screwed up because i should have known this wouldn't work but i i don't know the person enough and so i was like whatever i kind of well, live and learn for it and it uh it wasn't as like positive as you thought it would be, but it I'm sure is a good learning experience. Yeah. yeah. And maybe take it more seriously next time or like or no. not even take it more seriously. Yeah. Fail it fail again, fail better. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Or failure is just another way of learning. And yeah. um oh. I didn't have any yeah. pre I actually was sort of like, should I be bothering to do this or not? You know, I was con I was debating that for a long time and and I sort of was like, Well you gotta try even if you're gonna like fail because if you don't then you're not you never know you know so it's like well I tried and and I was I kind of knew like okay I know Frankie I kind of know how he operates I know this is a real long shot and I guess my only lesson was like well just suss things out better like when you know something's 
Like well, my one thing I wish I, which is obviously impossible, is I wish that I could see the future and be like, well, that's gonna just end up that way, and then so don't bother, like, and then you won't waste any time. But of course, it's like that's like then I would be a millionaire or a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> But I wouldn't need billions of dollars. Oh, that would be everything. boring. I mean, right? Yeah, that would lose just lose all the suspense nothing. of life. Right, right. So, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> I really kind of want to eat ramen noodles right now. I have some um, uh, mac and cheese with a little bit of um, tuna fish in it. In the fridge. That sounds very good. We can have that. Do you have enough? Oh, I have tons of it. It's on the stove. Oh, great. I'll go heat it up. You guys chat. Okay. No. Head to head. Solve a Mitch. Yeah. Was, was Zach over here before? He was here a long time ago, like probably... Oh, he probably went to a bar or something? He was very... This was a long time ago. Yeah, this was probably around 5 in the afternoon. Yeah. Come back soon, Ashley. We'll miss you. He's terrified. No, I'm not terrified at yeah. all. So, no, my only fear is an irrational fear of. Um, it, this this relates to Cassavetes, which is to say, like, what do we got to lose? There's a radio thing. It's going on and on nobody's probably listening and if someone's listening it might be really interesting to them or it might not be but they, all they have to do is turn it off it doesn't hurt them for us to continue to talk so in a way it's like what is wrong why are we so afraid of being boring or why are we so afraid of of like um yeah of being uninteresting well, do you believe that's that uh access to life is equal so? Does everybody have the equal access to like life? I would think that that's the one thing that everyone is equal. Really? I mean, for example, you know, they always say uh, some, you know, some person could have everything, but the one thing they that they don't have is youth, and they can look at a young person and and regret. You know, like that's the one thing that everyone shares is that you don't live forever. Well, that's time. That's not life. I mean, like, what is life? People do. Some people have greater access to the kind of movement that is like the vital movement of life than others. I mean, that's a big. Oh, kind of well, that's a question. different question, I think, yeah, because yeah. Um, access to life itself yeah. is something that we all share. Right. We're um, all alive. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. We're all living. And we also have. And everyone is a free agent, and any, every single person can... Everybody's a free agent? Right, that we have free agency. We have agency, and we can... Right now, I can do anything. I can do any, just about anything that I can physically do, I can do. There's nothing stopping me from doing just about anything. There's, a, it's the, there's endless possibilities in front of me, and yet... You're talking about the actualization of yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, or the actualization of anything, anything that I think to do. You well, know? I know you've just, like you know you've been you've always been involved in certain forms of activism at all times, and it's uh, you know. yeah. But I'm not talking about myself yeah. in the, in the sense of like me. I mean any human being at this second, in this moment, any human being on Earth can do anything they want, and some human beings will really. Well, they can, but they, they may not be, they may not have the uh, psychological tools or the confidence, the, um, the idea, all of those things, the will, um, but... You don't uh, think there are natural kind of like finite limits of the world, or are you, or are you kind of presupposing that? Yeah, I'm presupposing. Within, within the limits of the world. Right, and within the limits, or within the limits of, for example, if you're... If you have no legs, you're not gonna be the best runner. You know, you might be something else, right. something similar, uh -huh. but you won't be the best runner because you don't have legs. Or else you'd be the best runner with artificial legs or something. Um, uh, but 
apart from those kinds of in disabilities, and then but then you can add to it that there's a disability of just one's selfhood. Uh, what you are uh, is a disability, in a sense, can disable you. Sure. Do you know that Andy Warhol quote where he says, um, being born is like being kidnapped and sold into slavery? No, I didn't know that quote. Yeah. What do you think about that one? Being born is like being kidnapped and sold into slavery. In some ways, I, I mean, I think that that's kind of like a, a perspective that one could have in a given moment. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, I sometimes perceive life a little bit like a prison and that it's all about breaking out. Mm -hmm. um, but um, also, uh, sometimes it's not that way. Sometimes it's like, a uh, it's like heaven, you know. You never want anything more Whoa. than it. Yeah. Where when have you experienced heaven? What's one of your heavenly moments? Every day. Every, Every day, day you experience heaven. Yeah, I think Is so. Is this just like a like certain instances, certain like certain moments? moments. Yeah. yeah. It's just like everything is like. Yeah. Uh, I will eventually, but not right this minute, unless well. Are you proposing that you would bring some more out? Okay, I'll have some. Oh, you want me to feed it to you? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. I put chili stuff on it. But we really want you to come back too, the conversation. Yeah. Unless you don't want to. That's not a very big bite, I'm sorry. I, I will. Do we have a new name for the show? It's, it's made a turn. Um... I usually, with names, I, I let them just happen. Sometimes it's a bad idea because then they can be really dysfunctional names. But um, but when it comes to naming things, I just I generally just let them happen. So, yeah. so um, if I said something, then you just roll, you just roll with it. Yeah. Are you talking about this show or the show you're going to do? Your show? No, this show. Oh, this yeah, show. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Well, it yeah. had different names that Armand made up. Yeah. I would say that this show yeah, is it become now? is becoming sort of just a long conversation in the night, into the night. Okay. Um, so maybe we can call yeah, it Into good. the Night. Into the Night. <laughs> or a long Zombie conversation play. into the night. Mitch Berman and Ashley Coffey. Yeah. I think we should offer people a reward if they listen to this up to this point. Yeah, if you're listening right now, we will give you something, but we have to think of what it is. You're something in the special. position to give rewards. I have nothing to give. Oh, well, I mean, you can always reward people with um, with actions. Uh, Ashley, do you have a reward we could give to the people who are still listening to our show at this point of time? A reward? All yeah, right. for their I'll endurance. Still on you. And their... Um, Something important. No tests of faith. Are you ready? Yeah. It was a quote. Oh, you're giving them the war reward right now. I like that even better. Yeah. yeah. I'm giving the reward right now. I was it's thinking a like a coupon that could be redeemed, but no. Get, get. No. I'll shut up. It's a quote by Faust. Do you know Faust? Faust? The drummer? Oh, is it Faust? The drum guy? I think it's Faust. The old drum guy. The old drummer. Once he said this to me, and I think it's something important to have in the back of your head all the time. And that is, conceive, believe, and you will achieve. And that sort of relates back to what I was saying. It's powerful. Yeah, so you believe in fabulation then. Could Explain fabulation. No, fabulation is a word. Uh, uh, fab is probably part of the article. It's a piece of the word fabricate. Yeah, fab to fabulate is usually, you know, if you don't like fabulators and you don't like liars. But and a fabu and a fabulation is different from a fabrication. A fabulation is like a. It's like an. It's synonymous. Oh, it's a no, synonymous so it's more like with fabulous. like fiction. Fiction. No, it's synonymous with like fiction. A fabulous. A when something is fab a fable, a fable, a fabulation, a fable. All, yeah, but all these words are right. Fabrication, fable, yeah. fa uh, fabulousness. Yeah. 
You said conceive and believe. That's that's the movement of fabulation. Mm-hmm. And confabulation. I guess, I guess a fabrication is more of an exaggeration than it is like... Yeah. No, fabrication is literally a creation. Oh, is it? But it's a fake creation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's how I think if I don't have a dictionary in front of me, but I would think that, you know, if you're fabricating a story while well, you're creating a story yeah, from scratch, from well, nothing. Fabrication is also like, you know, an assembly line fabricates. Yeah. Yeah. So I think people use the word fabrication as if in they kind of drop the word story. But what they mean is they're fabricating a story. Hot sauce? Yeah, I didn't put any on yours. I was hoping you would. You were hoping I would? Yeah, because I really like hot sauce. Chili? Yeah. The chili paste? Yes. Okay, I'll put some on there. It's so good. Yeah, I'm a hot sauce eater. You should switch bowls. We could. We can all share some water. That's okay, because she's going to put some on that one. so. Um... So where were we? I feel like we were talking about something... I was asking if you believed in fabulation. You know, I, I do in a way. I mean, I, as much as I want to rail on like Frankie, for example, I, I admire that about him, his ability to take nothing and turn it into something. Yeah, you know, I've always been amazed. And when I first met Frankie, I always had my doubts about everything that he said. It, and with good reason. Really? Because yeah. I actually found out that most of everything that he claimed was like, you know, somewhat true. When it always somewhat turned out true. to be true. Yeah. Yeah. There. I mean, there's a certain amount of it. Yeah. There's a certain amount of truth to what he. He is really someone who creates, like, taps into people's dreams in a way, and then like makes them real or some or not real necessarily, but like figures out what people want and then like sort of gives them the impression that it's going to happen. And then it actually kind of does happen. Yeah. It's a funny thing. But it actually works. It and it's works. something that I'm not capable of. I, I'm way too literal-minded for that. And sincere, yeah. Yeah, like I'm too sincere in a sense. And I'm not a sincere person necessarily, but I'm too sincere in that way. Like I'm kind of incapable of leading people on a whole lot. Yeah, you don't come off as a con man. But I could be a con man. I could con people. You but could. I and in certain circumstances I might. Yeah, yeah. But not in have you, uh, have you not with friends man? or people that I feel yeah. that I not with friends. Yeah, not with friends. This is late night therapy with uh Zav Ashley and Mitch. I was saying that I'm I, I could con you. people but I I have a hard time conning my friends necessarily, you know? Like, but then again, I could even, I don't know, if I was, po- if my back's against the wall, I might even have to con my friends. Yeah. You know, I had a good realization about friendship, actually. What was it? I don't Wait, know. did you ever read that um, Agamben essay on friendship? No, but I'm supposed to. Have oh, you? Thank you. Yeah. Whoa. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Ashley just introduced Agamben <laughs> to our late night therapy session. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk. You want to talk Ga- Agamben, Ag- Ashley? Agamben? Giorgio Agamben. Who is... Oh, this is someone that you talked about before, right, Ashley? Me? Yeah. Is he a philosopher? He's Excuse a, me? Yeah, he's Hello? A- Lady who just walked in? Hello? Hi. We're closed right now. Yeah, I work here, but we're closed right now. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, the buses aren't running right now. It's not running anymore. It's 3.30. You're going to be okay? I'm right here. We're doing a radio show right now. Yeah. So. Sorry. We're talking to each other on the. It's. We're doing a radio show. Good. Take it. Take it easy. Good luck. I once was reading this George Craig book called Species of Spaces and Other Pieces. And he like he 
Yeah. He's fond of wordplay and lists, and in one of his lists, it, he wrote a segment called Walls, or something like that. Walls. And... W-A-L-L-S. Yes, he's talking about walls, and tearing uh. walls down, and how walls are dividers, yeah. and yeah. it would be nice if a structure that is a home didn't have walls to divide you from oh. the outside world. Mm. I think it's nice that like we have the door open. I mean, anyone can walk in, but it's like I don't know. It's like I, for some reason, like that gesture resonates with me. Like I always want to leave all my doors open, even though it's shitty because yeah. you can't do that all the time. Right. Um, but you want to. Why? Why can't you? You just have to negotiate when somebody has to walk in. That's why well, people. Well, you can't. It's like yeah. To there are certain things you can't negotiate. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there are certain things you can't negotiate. Like if someone wants there are certain to things. hurt you. Right. Or rob, or you, rob or you. or you. Know. I remember yeah. hearing that Marlon... You can give them your stuff. That's not really a negotiation. Or like sometimes people like yeah. come to other people's homes and just, sh- you know, shoot them. And like do fucked up shit for no reason. Well, and even, I mean, them. walls are just physical barriers. But there are other barriers. You yeah. know, there's the walls of not paying attention to someone there's a i mean we put a wall to this woman you know we could have opened up all our money all our pockets and given her endless amounts of money you know and she would have been really happy if we would have done that but ultimately there's you know we are we need to protect ourselves in some ways you know like and that's a horrible thing about our society because we live in a world of inequity but um but at the same time, sometimes it's nice to to um, challenge that mm-hmm. barrier. Sure. Um, Ashley, can you move the mic a little closer to you? I can or hold, hold it. it. Yeah. I can hold, hold it. it. Holding is nice. Um, yeah, the inequity. See, this was kind of getting back to my question as to whether or not you think everybody has equal access to the vital movement that is life. Or if it isn't unequal somehow. Not money, but life. Not money or power, but just like the movement of life. I know, it's so very like, God, I'm coming off as like a fucking mystic right now, but um. No, 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 I'm. The, the, I'm the, the, if people, if I'm some people don't time. have greater kind of like, maybe access is a bad word, but if some people aren't just more kind of into the intensity, that is life or not. Yeah, I mean, for example, what about a vegetable, a person who's a vegetable? Right. I mean, yeah. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, right there, right, you're, yeah, yeah. you're not accessing life. Yeah. In the same way as a person who isn't a vegetable. Right. Um, and yet, maybe you're accessing something we don't even understand. Maybe. How do we know without being there? Yeah, maybe they're more open than anybody else because it just kind of like passes right through them. I mean, a like rock. A empty relay, in a sense. It all just comes and goes. They can't react, so they don't have to like make the decisions to react. What about an way. ant or a small insect? What about an atom? And then we are atoms yeah right like i mean think about uh what we're composed of we're composed of all these tiny cells and every one of them has a we're listening we're composed of all these cells and every single one of those cells has a complex of dna inside the cell it's got a whole set of instructions every single cell in our body could be an eye cell or it could be a toenail cell or it could be a hair cell Mm -hmm. And yet they all have instructions and they all end up being, you know, this composition, which we call ourselves. What is an anthill? Isn't it just something similar in a way? It's thousands of cell-like beings, but they operate according to a body. And we operate according to like a body politic. So... um, what is, you know, how do, do you even know? I mean, is every part of you experiencing life equally? Or when you do yoga or meditation, you become more in touch with your whole body, but other times you're less in touch with your whole body. Uh-huh. I don't know. 
Who do you think? Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, this is late night humanism with uh, Mitch and Zav and Ashley. <laughs> uh, we're we're all in awe at the late night hour and um, the human it's body. I think that you can like manifest those feelings and that they don't actually exist, but you you want them to. Like, say you're like I don't know. It's it's interesting because it's like you would you would think that like if you're riding your bike and and you're riding it as like hard as you can and you're like having like some sort of like spiritual or like religious experience because of it because you're putting your body in this like whatever pressure like part it, it may seem like it's more physical than it actually is mm-hmm. yeah exertion brings you closer to life or how about when you're having a or yoga the time of your of life yoga. how about your you're having are, because when you were talking about biking are you saying that this is sort of like a full experience like the kind of experience a marathon runner has when they're like at the prime of their race or are you saying it's more like a, a kind of like loving loving feeling where you're like in love with the sun and the air and the the foliage and the fact that you're f- moving through space it's both it can be both or either or but I mean, the reason I brought that up is because you were talking about the body, and even like, um, you brought up yoga as like maybe an experience that like triggers those types of like emotions or like thought processes or something. And um, well, absolutely, I think that it doesn't necessarily have to be a any like uh, like like physical mm-hmm. activity necessarily. You could be just sitting with another person or like driving in a car. Or, interacting with someone or your mind like yourself you know and you may have like these like profound experiences where like yeah you feel real right you feel like not not real in the context of the reality in quotes that we live in but like you feel like you are a living person you know i don't know <laughs> an awakening sure sure yeah because i feel like um this happens to me a lot where I'm awakened, especially by artists or thinkers or um, maybe even just a person a person that I encounter and I, you know, um, underestimate the um, value of their experience. And then I have a, a connection with that person and then I realize that person, this person is like tripping me out. Like I'm learning so much from this person who I didn't value enough a minute ago. It's like a kind of shock. And it's yeah, an awakening. It's like, wait, I've before. been asleep. Or being, or the thing of being sort of like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, go ahead, you guys. I like how you just said, uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, what did you just say? You said something like. Awakening. Yeah, but you, but, but you, you the other but you said like it's like waking up from like the slumber or something like that which is exactly what it is it's like we're we're in a constant like slumber or like day-to-day lives ah. or, like the everyday our like everyday banalities you know like we just we just like go with these motions and do things that we right. think we're supposed to be doing and like sometimes we examine things or like are aware of things at certain moments but it's not like a constant awareness necessarily like you can ingrain certain things in yourself or like condition yourself to be aware of certain things but you're not like constantly aware of everything at all times yeah i mean i think that actually you couldn't possibly be but at the same like yeah okay so sometimes we could turn this into a word about ashley now actually oh what Oh, the, the name of the show? Oh, um, <laughs> What are you talking about? Yeah, this is a oh, word about Ashley. Well, I mean... of Ashley and Mitch. I feel as though... Um, I occasionally have these moments where I encounter... Okay, here's an example. I'll, uh, it's a bad example, but it's an example. I have a friend who is very successful. 
I have several friends who are very successful, like in my mind, successful. Money. I almost hold them up. What's that? Money. No. no. Um, cur- just like what they do, status. sort of career-wise. Yeah, status. Um, maybe a little bit status. Yeah. Um, but access. They have. Yeah. They oh, have yes. active. Their minds are active, and when I see them, okay. I'm surprised by the activity of their minds Uh and the same thing with children you know like when I encounter my nieces and nephews it kind of I awaken I awaken from a slumber in a way and I realize wait I'm not alive the way these people are they're aliver (laughs) more alive Mm -hmm. and um, and it lingers with me for a little while I actually feel terrible usually because of it it usually makes me feel like i'm dead in a certain ways that i'm not completely alive it because these you people feel optimistic that like that's something that you could achieve or like switch on at any moment i think it's kind of like the same feeling you have in the morning when you're sleeping or when you're tired and then you kind of need to get up and you want to keep sleeping but you know that there's the day you know you need to seize the day and it's a similar thing except it's not involving that physiological sleep, but it's more of a uh, 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 consciousness sleep, mm-hmm. consciousness slumber. Yeah. Will you let me smoke a cigarette in here? Sure. You have cigarettes? You can say no. No, no, I, 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 I'm I, very unparticular I'm about fresh that. fresh out. Mm, never mind. I got some in my apartment. Yeah, I'm not a picky person. When it, I mean, if it was like all the time, it would be a problem, but it's just once or twice, it doesn't bother I me. just wanted to smoke a cigarette right now. But I can't. Well, we were talking about heaven. This came from uh, before you got here, I think. I w- Mitch asked me, do you ever experience heaven in life? And I said, every day I experience it no. a little bit. Do What about you, mm-hmm. Ashley? Yeah, That's have you ever had a heaven you moment? That up. I was talking to, to um, Oliver the other day, and he was saying he was at like his friend's house in um, Chicago, where he's from, in like, a suburb of Chicago and he was saying man this is like my heaven like being here is like heaven I've been so like dead and out of it for such a long time and it was mm-hmm. so good to like come here and revive myself and whatnot and I started thinking about that and I was like oh, I don't really feel like I've had that type of experience in a really long time because I don't feel like I feel like heaven to me, and it could be different to to all to any people, but like when I feel the most alive and at my best, and like the most um, like excited and positive and real, etc., is when I'm interacting with another human being. It's like through those types of interactions that really wake me up. Um, and I guess I just haven't. I mean. Yeah, I feel like I haven't had that in a long time. Like, like the, 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 like, the true, like, tenderness and, like, compassion and love and, like, unconditional love from, like, another person. Like, I have that with my family members, but I don't get to see them. Mm. I feel like even though it's, like, stressful Family to be is like, heaven? Mine is, yeah. I or mean, love. It's now, or love. Love is? Yeah. Um... That gets to the Cassavetes. Every day with me. But you're not. I think that he was just saying that to be nice because he said he was in heaven somewhere else. Hmm. Well, I think that maybe I'm, you know, when I talk about heaven, I'm talking about something that's not too hard to achieve. It's like there are moments where I'm just like, I love life. Yeah. And it might just be like, I'm just sitting in bed and I don't have anything to do and no one's gonna bug me and I'm drinking some coffee and I just love life Mm -hmm. and I don't think that's too hard to achieve and it's not I don't want more at that moment it's like I'm completely satisfied I guess that to me heaven is complete satisfaction in a certain way and then there are times where I'm totally alone and I'm in heaven totally alone in the middle of nowhere some of my happiest moments in life That's have true. been totally alone in the middle of nowhere 
I've with been nobody. Alone in yeah. Like, well, like when you're riding your bike and how you were saying like, and you just like feel the sun and like, and does it feel transcendent? Absolutely. Really? My Except I don't know exactly like what it means. Mo- my moments of heaven have been like, kind of extreme moments of um, like, hedonism, ultimately. Yeah. That's how I would describe it. Hmm. Like, like when you're like f- in like full force, like going for your desires or something. Yeah, or they just all of a sudden like some fantasy just like falls into place and it just like happens. That's heaven. I think that's also yeah. heaven. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the same thing. It's just yeah. somehow. I mean, maybe it's. What is it? I don't know. I mean, it why like, do it we... like breaks? It has no cause. I mean, to me, heaven has no cause. It's just like all of a sudden, all these spontaneous thing happens, and then this event kind of rises up out of the blue, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, holy shit! I can't believe this is happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Those are my heavenly moments. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like some of the most amazing moments are moments that seem suspiciously like illegal in a way well i was gonna but that's more along the hedonistic lines i was gonna say suspiciously um everything comes together yeah right almost as if it was all meant to be or something Okay. And um, and I feel like yeah. I'm in sync with the universe. Right, right. Well, that's always the weird kind of side effect too. Yeah, this feeling of. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Once, um, my friend's father is like an old Buddhist architect what I'll call him. A Buddhist and architect. He was old. He was like in his An 70s. old Buddhist architect. For having, yeah, I mean, he was old for have like, for my friend to be his daughter or whatnot. She was like 19 at the time. And um, he really like, you know, he was just like old and he's had like a number of children who are all much like older than Jesse and she was the youngest, but like their, their situation was really weird, but um, Long story short, he really kind of was not a parental figure. Mm-hmm. He just like supported her financially, like would give her a place to live, but like, and like would chat with her. Mm-hmm. But it was not like the not the conventional relationship of like a father and daughter or like uh-huh. any sort of parent and child or something like that. Yeah, it was something completely different. But at one point, they had. Um, they each had their own studio apartment, and it was right across from each other, like right across the hall from each other. And at that time, I was I was in homeschool for a semester, and I would just like get all of my work done in the first couple of days, and then go stay with Jesse at her studio apartment, and we would just like party, uh-huh. like, party really hard. Uh-huh. And I was always, um, I never wanted to drink. I did lots of other drugs, but I never, uh-huh. I would, didn't want to drink because my parents were alcoholics and I was oh. just like so turned off yeah. by it. And by the way, like people acted when they were drunk mm-hmm. or what I, that's what I thought. Yeah. And so I never wanted to drink. And then I remember being at Jesse's house and drinking for the first time mm-hmm. and like making a fool of myself and being really, really loud. Mm-hmm. And Jesse's dad like poked his head in and I said something really obnoxious. I don't even remember what I said. And then he left, and he didn't. He didn't like. Seem, it didn't seem to bother him or anything like that. Maybe he told us to be quiet. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, I was mortified. I was so embarrassed. I don't even know what I said. It must have been really embarrassing or something. I don't know. But the next day, I was completely mortified. And then he came over to Jesse's apartment, and I felt compelled to apologize to him. And I was like, uh, I. I was drunk and I was really out of line and I'm really sorry, I'm so embarrassed. And he put his hand on my shoulder and all he said to me was, and I always remember it for some reason, for some reason this Mm. is like a heaven to me, but he just said, life is life. And I was like, like a little light went on in my mind Mm. and I was like, wow. 
Yeah, it's really that simple. It is and it isn't, but like... That reminds me of this thing. Life is life. It's yours to live. He basically said it was meaningless, but it was at the same time really optimistic. That's why you fabulate. Or that, that in a sense, it's like, well, don't sweat it. There are so because many things. Matter. There are so many things, and everything happens the way it happens. Yeah. And, um, being ashamed is, what is being ashamed then? What is that about? What is shame? Being ashamed, I think. What is, does it do? I think when when a person is ashamed, it's um, when when uh, something has been imposed on them. I think a lot of times, and like they've suffered negative consequences because of it that they don't have control over, but maybe they feel like they do or okay. should or something like that. Right, like you should feel ashamed about what you've done. Like that kind of saying. What you does it broke the code? You what is the, the what is the code. function of shame? What does it do? It's to keep people in the code, the behavioral codes. But I mean, no, it's no, a self-imposed like behavior. A person can, no, but like a person can be ashamed of like s this is like a really uh, that's guilt. Weird example. No, no, no. I'm being like a a a person can be ashamed of like being molested. Like that's something embarrassing oh. to them. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Something that had been imposed on them that they had no control over, but maybe thought that they could have. Or like, when s you can tell someone they well, should Well, guilt and shame, isn't it the same? It's just a different word for the same thing? No, I often I think of think so. guilt is like, more kind of self-induced maybe. Or maybe or, shame or is like more self-induced, and guilt is something that no, can be really, imposed. Really because you can be shame guilty. Is something is that's like strictly societal. Guilt. Well, shame. for example, a guilty verdict. You may not be ashamed yeah, or feel like, guilty. You know the the Kafka trial where the guy keeps on like the Kafka's trial where um is it the trial or the castle? The trial, maybe? I don't uh, know. The trial, yeah. Where you, oh, God. I'm, Isn't that uh, Camus? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. But yeah, basically it says something like, you know, you're only guilty if you feel guilty and self-induced. You know, there's only I a trial if you feel societal. yourself. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the only reason I said the trial is because it sounds like it would be about guilt. I mean, guilt always sounds to me like judgment. Shame is less about, like, judgment. And it's more That's about funny just because like I, 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 I'm not trying to be a contrarian or a contradictory, but guilt, you know, guilt, a person is guilty as charged. Well, yeah, it's like that a person, legal thing. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a term, but you can't say shame as charged. You know, you yeah. can't be imposed shame by others. Right. That's you know? I agree. I agree that, that guilt is, is more of a societal, has more so societal implications. But when you feel feelings of shame or when you feel feelings of guilt, I don't know. I personally don't know if there's a difference, really. I think it could use them interchangeably. Well, shame is more embarrassment, I think, than, like, guilt is more, like, yeah. has um, like guilt. Moral you want to turn yeah, back. You yeah, want to You want to undo it. Moral failure. Shame you might feel. Yeah, maybe shame is a feeling and guilt. But yeah. you can have guilty feelings, but... Maybe guilt is more of a thing where it's like, well, I feel guilty, but I don't, it doesn't necessarily embarrass me. I just wish I wouldn't have done it or yeah, something. Yeah. I don't know. But I was going to just, what I was getting at earlier is like, well, okay, shame is something that we, it's sort of like when you feel ashamed, you, you're you teaching yourself, right? You're sort of like coaching yourself. And that's what the pain comes from is that you're coaching of two minds yourself. and one mind is you know, program to just like, well, I would just do that dumb thing again. I'll get drunk tomorrow. I'll make an ass of myself right, tomorrow. Like shame on you. But then there's a part of you that's like, no, don't do that tomorrow. Don't make an ass of yourself tomorrow. It's like of two minds. And so then you're in an internal struggle of, with yourself. Is Zava Gemini? Zava, are you Gemini? When's your birthday? Libra. I said, Libra. Oh, I knew that. I, knew, I know that you're a Libra. What's yeah. your birthday? Are you Gemini? Gemini? What are you, Ashley? I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> I was so compelled. I like to the say way you say that. Really I was gonna say something really grotesque, like I'm a Sag badge. 
<laughs> that's not even grotesque. That's just funny. Or uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, ladies, that's more. I mean, I guess I I could call myself a sag vag, but it wouldn't, wouldn't work as well. I want to go to Thursday's fucking disco. See, you know, sorry, this is completely off topic. We're looking at the Reggae Fridays flyer, and on the back it says there's a Funkin' Disco night on Thursdays. It makes me think of Mike Deasy, because he's a wonderful dancer. Really? Yes, he is. That's how I met him. Really? Wow. He's dancing at Why Not Three. Oh, wow, that's like, a funny place. Oh, no, I guess you ago. could dance there, yeah, yeah. Well, they used to. They used to have, like, a Funkin' Soul night, but that didn't last that long. But oh. What was your show about with May? With May? Oh, they weren't doing the, a show. Were you it? mean the previous show? Oh, yeah. You weren't doing a show? Or the one just now that you walked in yeah. like five minutes ago? That was with like Sasha hour. Gray and then she left. Or the, Frankie, like they all left. Everyone left. And then May was like, sorry, it didn't work. And I mean, she was actually kind of consoling me a little bit. Like, yeah, it wasn't right. And shouldn't have happened she was drunk and blah 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 you know but she she understood my predicament so she was kind of like yeah trying to like console but me but did she come like with the circus yeah she did <laughs> and the thing about it is i mean again it's like i don't i don't want to go too deep into it again but it's like i don't blame any of that yeah yeah it's just unfortunate because it didn't have to happen yeah And it'll take a while to heal from this. Oh, it was love. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Between me and Frankie, I mean. Because no, I feel a little really? bit like... Well, I just feel it a little bit... people sometimes. I feel a little bit like that was really careless of him. Uh, he behaved very carelessly and didn't take me, like, my time and my effort into consideration at all. Or he did, but he didn't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Frankie's a schizo. Frankie's Frankie, and uh, the best thing that I've yeah, learned, in, in like, the best you know, thing I've learned about people, but like, the greatest thing you, sorry to just pound my thing yeah. home, but Pounded. the one thing <laughs> I've learned, you know, if you can figure a person yeah. out and the way they behave and predict how they will behave, yeah. you will never be disappointed. Yeah, but that's the funny thing is you can't predict Frankie's behavior, you know? Oh no, he's very. This was exact. Yeah, he's I, predictab he's pretty like predictably. Pretty predictably unpredictable. Is that what you mean? Uh, no, it was, very predictable, that predictable. That happened, it did, it was very predictable that everything that happened the way it did would have happened the way it did. Did I do that? No, it's just on a timer. Oh. But I, actually, we did a show in the dark like this because something happened with the light once, and it was really nice. <laughs> this is the show in the dark. <laughs> We're coming up on the fourth hour of past midnight. <laughs> <laughs> We're rambling on. Well, it's been Ashley fun having Zalman you guys. Mitch. I'm the kind of person who could go on for hours and hours, but I don't want to. Yeah. Know. What is it about having a mic in your hands that I changes? I just don't really ever believe everything. in, like, um, stopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get. I would like to see. I'm like this at parties too. I would, I, I just, the last person to leave. I don't know why. I just. Uh, I want to invite Paul Finger, David Robbins, Zav, Ashley Coffee, and um, who else is on my list? Tom Fossey. Who? Tom Foss. Oh yeah, Tom Foss. <laughs> what the hell? Let's get Tom <laughs> Foss in here. Who's David? To to come and uh and we'll put a bigger table on this here stage and uh, we'll have a conversation. Well, I think actually Four hour I think too many people just ends up being a pro like it's really nice to talk to. I think three is a really nice number actually. Yeah. yeah. Really? I think three is a nice number because one person can kind of take a break while the other two work something out and then the other person can formulate something and then jump in. Yeah. I don't know. I always feel like we need a narrator there like on the side. I'm quite serious about that. I always feel like I need somebody who's like narrating on the side when I'm doing a radio show. So like a fourth person. Yeah, but just doing like commentary, narrating it. Like, I don't know. That's the kind of like guideline. I don't know why. I guess yeah, it's it's contagious. Yeah. All right. I think I'm that tired. 
What? I'm, I slept till pro late. Then. I'm tired from stress. <laughs> yeah. That was just stressful. It's exhausting. For like five minutes. It was very. It was stressful in the sense where it's like this is all making me feel very like. Uh, <laughs> Defeated uh? and exhausted. Yeah, and like, like or, or sort of like it feels sort of like misunderstood right now. Yeah. And it's the last thing, the last way I want to be understood. Well, it's such like a adolescent feeling, and it's like. Yeah. No, no one likes that feeling. A I mean, you tend feeling. to feel that way a lot when you're, you know, in your adolescence, but like, it's not a good feeling. No. I think that's why like people grow up is because they like want to not feel that way. Yeah. You yeah. Feel, wait, I'm sorry. How are how are we feeling? I'm just. Um, feeling sort of misunderstood. Misunderstood. Uh, yeah, misunderstood, and at the mercy of kind of like a pack of people who uh, are, well, you know, that's all a, that's sort of collectively being a, a certain way that is just energy. The energy of it is isn't that a privileged? It's, it's dominated. It's a dominating energy, and yet it's a, it's like an idiot energy, yeah. and being it's, sort of at the mercy of an idiotic energy. And um, and just kind of being like, oh, everything right now is in, is opposite. It's like opposite time. Do you want to be understood, Zoff? I think that's a good feeling. <laughs> or be understood. Uh, not necessarily understood, because I I don't necessarily have that much to say. So like, it's not like I'm like if everyone understood what I have to say, then the world would be a better place. It's more that. I want to, and I think everybody wants to kind of be able to just con, kind of get each other or something, or get it together, like be on the same wavelength, so to speak. You know. I don't know. Maybe I'm. But that's that's. I maybe like that's, being deluded about people. Deluded. Or maybe you know sometimes it's nice to be yeah. torn out of your. Deluded. Like I like being deluded. You know, or just so kind of like struck with people that I make up things so in Distracted a sense acted and deluded yeah about people you you like to have an idea about someone and then find out that you're completely wrong or I don't know how it could be any other way uh, by not having ideas about people but not like how do you prevent that I'm not talking about prejudices or presuppositions although I don't think you can survive without either of those but I just, how do you prevent having ideas? I think that there's like certain types of judgments that you can make on a person. And like prejudice. I, yeah, sure, but I mean like... Don't you think certain, prejudice is... There's certain types, like you, yeah. can, you can like deduce what you think someone is like, like automatically by like their style of dress or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or like you might have ideas about someone because you've heard of them. Well, those are potentially all good signs. But you don't necessarily have to um, pay attention to it, you know? Right, no. I mean, or like being that by it. is called being interested in life, maybe. That's why we all have greater access to life. Why those things? This is the late night hour with uh, <laughs> Mitch. It's turning uh, educational. Um, <laughs> this has got to be the longest I've got show a blister on, on my the foot. radio so far. Except maybe the first Bleeding. night when we were... Um, remember you yeah. and me had a conversation and I, I think it just kept going and going that day, that night. I kind of feel that's on the path we're on now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh uh. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. 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 It's the cops. It's the cops. What? Have you ever had a police officer on this radio station? No, not yet. Well, not to my knowledge. 
Yeah. I've been going up and down the street. Yeah. Late night cop interviews. That could be interesting. <laughs> terrible. Yes. Yeah. Fun. Fun. Late night hour. Good times. <laughs> Mitch tried to get. You ever watch Drews with Candy? Yes. That was a good show. It was a really good show. Yeah. The Rogsters? Strangers with Candy. Oh. Uh, no? What's Strangers with Candy? Really? You haven't oh, seen it? Like wow. That. That's it's so funny. It's probably like the one... Like, the one piece of art that's made the greatest impact on, like, my life. And really? And personality. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Whoa. That makes sense in a way. Because it's so... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it was. Right, so that's that is like my straight up humor, and uh -huh. you just like, gave him some ideas. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say it's funny because I remember discovering Strangers with Candy after the fact, like after they had been pretty big, but this was still way back, probably like '94 or something yeah. or '95, and um, and it was an it was one of those things where I was like, wow, this is a whole new way of. This is just all different. It's new. Yeah. It's totally new. I mean, and, and now like, it's totally I mean, old, which is so strange. We're like on the other side of it. Well, it is old, but there, I don't feel like there's been anything like it since then, really. Or like just their style of like, yeah. collaboration. Right. And, and like the, the close, I mean, people would always compare them to Monty Python. I never, I've never watched that. Well, Monty Python's really funny, too, but... Um, because it was like a, a troop of guys and they would play women and men all the time. They'd always play male and female characters and they just, it was lots of sketch comedy. Um, very similar in a way. Yeah, now that you mention it, I can't think of anything that's happened since. But just even like the little motifs that are in it, like, like a lot of times, like they just did it because they were like, I don't know, they were all really thoughtful people who were like writing the show and creating it. So like Mr. Black Man is the name of the it's, it's Blackman or whatever. Uh -huh. It's like the name of the principal. He's yeah. a big black guy. Uh -huh. And like there's Oh so wait many a second. Things. I'm thinking of a whole other thing. Oh, are you? What are you thinking of? Like Oh my god. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking God, what am I thinking of? Yeah, I thought It's totally different. It's not strangers with candy. Yeah, like Mad TV or something. No, no, not Mad TV. <laughs> Kids in the hall. Oh, kids in the hall. Yeah, kids in the I hall. I thought you were talking about do. kids in the hall. Okay, yeah, it doesn't well, make sense. Well, see, any... that, it makes sense because, like, kids in the hall and Strips with Candy, like, showed at, during the same time, like, on Comedy Central. You know? Yeah, and also or, it's like, sort of Comedy like Central word show. thing. I mean, it's just kind of like the wording is similar, like three words, and then kids in the hall, strangers with yeah, candy. Yeah. You know? Um, what about oh, okay, strangers? strangers with candy. Yeah, that's uh, Ellen Sedaris, or what's her name? Uh, Amy Sedaris, yeah. yeah, she's hilarious. Yeah, she yeah, yeah. Is. Yeah, okay, well, that's totally it's different. Totally that's different. so okay, different. I that's was... so different. Did anybody Radically watch Stranger different. Danger as a kid? No, but I've heard of it. What's that? It's like this educational video teaching kids to not be, like, be teased by strangers. strangers who offer them candy. Oh, like so that. it wasn't funny? It was serious? <laughs> It's like well, Mr. I'm Young. sure if we watched it right now, it'd it's be fucking hilarious. Uh huh. But it like it was like this guy who was dressed up like an alien. Yeah. But like a humanoid alien, and uh. he would like drive around near all these scenarios, like a guy pulling up to these kids, like, "Hey kids, you want some candy?" And then he'd offer them some candy. Um. <laughs> oh, and that's like Strangers with Candy. Strangers yeah. with Candy. Yeah, exactly. Stranger Danger. Speaking of uh, scenarios and reenactments, I think like the best show that uses that as as a like formal element in their show is Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, so good. wow, that's Those a reenactments. I was I was like searching my mind of what you were gonna say, and that's a pretty good one. Unsolved that's a Mysteries. very good one. I spent wow, a lot Wow, you two of watch time. TV, huh? I did when I was a kid, yeah. I mean, I used to watch Unsolved Mysteries like in the summers when I wasn't in school. Yeah. And 
you know, I'm, like, in early middle school, maybe even, like, fifth grade, sixth grade, I'd just, like, sit and watch Unsolved Mysteries and then feel really scared and weird. Or, like, Strangers with Candy. I used to watch it when I was in middle school. It was, like, it, it, it was all reruns, but it, like, aired as, like, an after-school special on Comedy Central. It was, like, a, it's, and it's a spoof of an after-school special. Anyway, that's, like, mm-hmm. one of the concepts behind the show. But, um, yeah, I used to it's watch it It's a whodunit. Then. The non-fiction whodunit. What's what does that mean? A whodunit. I don't think that's what it is. It's kind of <laughs> though, in a certain way, it is. No, I don't know. Wrong. Well, it's an unsolved mystery, so it's kind yeah. of like a whodunit. Oh no, I was talking about strangers with candy. Uh, oh, I'm but, sorry. But unsolved Back mystery. And forth. No, unsolved mysteries was not a whodunit thing. It was just like it was this is like, some weird crazy right. phenomenon that's unsolved and it will never oh, be. Oh, you know, like, I thought uns- uh, but it also would be something like so and so killed so and so or true. there was a string of murders yeah. or something and we still don't know who did it yeah. or something. Oh um, yeah. They, they they did a lot of they did they featured a lot of con artists mm-hmm. on that show. Yeah. That is a really great like And then they would say like news break this person because they had a call center and you could call if you had and it'd be like yeah. after the story they'd be like if you have any information on the whereabouts of this yeah, person yeah, yeah. call <laughs> yeah they must have gotten so many calls they must have gotten so many crazy calls the I calls themselves you must have, have that nuts. here I need to watch it yeah yeah and I think I owe it to Tom I think Tom's the person who brought that into the store mm-hmm. he really likes Unsolved Mysteries Tom Foss Likes the on person solve you're going to interview. He cracks me up. I think he Are brought it in here because there's one person looking for it. There's one person that really likes to watch it in here. I don't think he rents... What's it? He's a bald guy. Nate? Is that him? Well, this one friend of mine from the Occupy came in here and requested to watch it a bunch. Yeah, maybe it was him. Did he give you a jacket or try to? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what a weird thing. We, you know, this recording will be really interesting in like 20 years. If anyone, if it exists in 20 years and we actually sit through it and listen to or someone, some person listens to it. But it might also be sort of just like now. It'll be 20 years from now and it'll just be like now in a way. It'll just be normal. If you're listening to this and it's 20 years from now, if it's um, what would the date be? July. No, we're in June yet. Everything's um, a time capsule. June what? June sixteenth. June fee. June seventeenth. June seventeenth. No, it's not. It's like two thousand. It's the eighteenth. Oh right, nineteenth, two thousand twelve. Oh yeah, it's nineteenth. Who pie? Oh wow, what are you guys gonna do for her birthday? No, I mean it. Oh, now it's the nineteenth. No, it's her birthday yesterday. Technically. Oh, uh huh. We did the same old thing. I just gave her extra hugs and kisses. Oh. Happy, happy birthday! <laughs> she went on a little date this morning. Invited me along, but I uh, did not. I was a little hungover. Mm. I drank a lot. Really? Yesterday? Yeah. Oh, we biked yeah, last we night. we biked last night, which was really good because I was not hungover the next day. That really helped me. That was fun. Yeah. I it was nice for me to come out of my element a little bit and bike. Mm-hmm. This is from Cuz I'm not the type to do that. I'm very pragmatic like I will bike, but I'll bike to a destination. To something to yeah. do something. I don't I don't yeah, I don't uh lolly. Do it for fun that much. Yeah, which is I don't know why that, you know, what that is. It's just a leap of faith or something, you know, but That's I'm very funny. pragmatic in certain ways. We all went for a bike ride last night. After, after Circle A? Yeah. Yeah. When did you um, leave and why? You were just tired? One thirty. Yeah, I just, I had no money. I didn't want to ask you to buy me another drink. I didn't care. And, um... <laughs> did you first say you're 30? Was that the first thing you said? No, he said it was like... One thirty. One thirty. One thirty. Oh, I see. It's dawning. On today, June nineteenth, yeah, twenty twelve. What if we? If you're listening to this and it is, is June or Agambe. Agamben. Agamben. 
Is he uh, Giorgio the- Agamben sh- was um, the prophet Peter in the Gospel of St. Matthew by Pier Paolo Pasolini. Really? And then he became a Italian scholar of theology and politics. Okay, cool. Um, were you talking Check about him, him the other day, Ashley? You wrote a book called Nudities, which is when? really good. Ben. I might have been. I was at the time reading this little book of three essays by him called What is an Apparatus? Oh, no. That consists of what is an apparatus, friendship, and what is What is the contemporary? What Isn't is the contemporary? A, like, he's not the person that we talked about at that show. That was Parekh. Oh, was yeah, Parekh. George Parekh. George Parekh. He was, uh, like, an Aleppo writer. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, did he write the book, the the novel about the missing letter E? Yes, it's called A Void. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Do you know yeah. about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know about it. I don't. Yeah. I haven't. Can you imagine having to translate that text? <laughs> Holy shit! They translated it from French, which is a word that, uh, which is a language that, like, I can't even think of a French word that doesn't have a letter E in it. Mm-hmm. To English without using a letter E. Uh, he is the most. Used yeah, but don't you know English the words? I mean, if you take the letter E out of everything, you'd know what it is. No, no, no. Like, you can't use a word that contains the letter E. Oh, I see. Yeah. You've got to avoid it. Avoid the letter E. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, like, a good game to play yeah, with yourself. Yeah, you know. I like it's that. It's a kind of self-generative yeah. novel in a sense. Why don't you and I and Mitch try it Okay. Again. Let's do. Th- oh. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> this is avoiding the letter E. I. Oops. And you both can try it. Try what? Try talking without a symbol that is not a I I O No, that's only a that's only who I'm still avoiding it. Um A I O U. A I O U. Those are the or a symbol that oh shit penalty (laughs) yeah you gotta be the ref since you're (laughs) I can't keep up I can't do this I was going (laughs) to say a symbol that spirals Kind of. Yeah, no. S P I R A L. Yeah. That works. Does the pronunciation. Oof. <laughs> is pronoun. Oh. <laughs> is, is saying. Uh, symbol. Words. Words? Words. Is saying symbolic words? For, for, um, for, um, okay, A. What is the Oh. <laughs> what is that? I. What is A? A vowel? Ha- oh. How? <laughs> how is A a 
symbol like a symbol what how is how is a a symbol how is a is is a uh, symbol a as a symbol a as a symbol a or <laughs> symbols Canadian that are, are that uh, that add Pertain? up to a word I <laughs> <laughs> try it with the letter E and then we can try it without the letter E it's it's, it's really difficult. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> what I yeah? Can you imagine writing a whole novel? What I no, wish you have to be creative and is, find different. What I wish is what I wish to say with. It's always taking this up. Huh? You is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> what I wish to say with you is dumb. <laughs> Has this painting always been here? Yes, this is my cousin's cousin's painting. Not this painting, but this mural. This is my grandma's painting. This okay. is my cousin's cousin's painting. My cousin's cousin came to Milwaukee. And, well, he went to the Art Institute of Chicago. And he is a painter in the sort of like very traditional sense. And he wanted to try his hand at a um, larger scale, something at a fresco. Scale. And he, I think he did it very close to the way frescoes should be done. Um, Wet plaster. Yeah, we had to lay down plat or do something. I don't know. And maybe it's not too accurate, but um, it gets this side is really not so like he, rush. He was rushing by the time he got here, but that side was better. But that side's got water damage. Which is uh, a kind of a shame. Yeah. I think I want to go to bed now. I think that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it's dawning here at. Uh, it's dawning. Mm, the sky's blue. It's not black anymore. Eight. Yeah. What is your address? Eight. Eight twenty-four oh. East Center Street. Five three two and two. It's dawn. Down. And it just dawned upon all of us that it is late. That's the end of this show.